Welcome to Session Zero for the Botch Pits rendition of Degenesis Rebirth Edition. Tonight will be Session Zero for my two guests. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Hey, it's Lenny. And I'm Lynn. And I'm Jorah, uh, one of the storytellers for the Botch Pit. So today we're playing Degenesis Rebirth Edition, um, which is a game made by Six More Vodka. It is a European game in make and model and we are going to go through a few things real quick and then we're going to get started so lenny why don't you tell us what your character's name is and a quick background um my character's name uh his name is judge draven uh he's the acting city judge for basket city in central Florida. um he has had a bit of a rocky history since he's been a judge he likes to play fast and lose the rules uh, however, though his methods may be flawed, he does get results. He's also, you know, he's seen a lot of shit and was the one to cause some of the shit. So, uh, yeah. All right, awesome. Uh, Lynn, you want to introduce your character? I would love to. So my character is Judge Jessica Freese. Freese, in the name of the law. She is a, uh, she's a trainee here in Bastion City under Judge Draven after her last trainer uh passed away so she's just kind of learning the rope she's a little bit more of a jumpy character herself she's a little fidgety she worries a little bit more than usual always got her eyes out always got her her ears to the ground awesome okay so we have the battle hardened city judge and the squirrelish squee or uh, squirmy deputy they're both city judges uh, one is a deputy trainee. The other one is a judge uh, level two rank proper. So our story takes place in Bastion City. It's in Central Borka. Central Borka is in Europe. You kind of have to think of this place as a scrapper's paradise. Scrappers are one of the cults who typically go around looking through scrap material, hence the name, and they find machine and technological relics to bring back to chroniclers. Chroniclers then appraise it and give them money for it. The clanners are more like farmers, raiders. Think of them as barbarians mostly, but they're also agriculturalists. They come from all different walks of life, really. The, uh, the clanners are one of the more versatile cults in the game. So in Bastion City, it's kind of like a dust ball. Think like Old West. It's the central hub trade route for a lot of the different clanner routes that lead in and out of central Borka. One of the chief primary functions of Bastion City is the inspection of all harvest materials. The reason that it's inspected so heavily is because one tiny bit of spore that can be found on any of the food has the potential to infect an entire city. For those of you that don't know in the game, the spore is brought on by the primer, and the primer is bad. Primer bad, spore bad. That's all you need to know. Some of the effects of the spore are rabid mutations. The spore can turn into sepsis inside of your body. It'll block your lungs out. It's really fucking bad. So the people who inspect these particular things are called spitalians, specifically spitalian hygienists. And as the clanners move in and out through the city and the scrappers trade their technological goods, it's the judges who keep the peace. On this particular day in Bastion City, Judge Draven and Judge Jessica are called into the Kindenval bar. It is apparent that there has been a fight of some kind and they've been called in to break it up. As the two of them approach the building, not yet going in, they can hear the crashing of tables and silverware and what sounds like a few men arguing over something. This is where we're gonna pan into you guys, so you guys take it from here. Hey boss, I got here as soon as I could. What have we got going on? Ah, uh, shit. <laughs> All right. Listen here, Rook. I'm gonna say it once and once only. You follow me. You don't ask questions, you do exactly as I say, understood? Understood, sir. Alright, maybe we'll live through the fucking day. Alright, we got a bar fight, so let's just go in and take care of this shit, break it up. Alright? Can I use danger sense for kind of a little bit better of an idea of what's going on in this bar fight? Yeah, go ahead. Do you know the rule for it? It's written on your sheet. It says, in something plus perception with a plus one dice per potential level on that. 
Mm -hmm. So you're going to roll your instinct plus your perception, and that's going to give you what you need for pass or fail. So your instinct should be two, perception's three, so you're rolling six total dice, 66. All righty. I've got one six, two fives, a three, a two, and a one. Outstanding. So you pass it. Let's say that through the yelling and screaming, you can hear the sound of glass breaking. And when there's glass breaking, there's always sharp objects. And it seems like people are pretty hostile in there. Hey, boss, before we walk in there, I can hear some glass breaking. People probably got some weapons. Have you never been in a bar fight, kid? I'm just trying to let you know. Never hurts to know what you're walking into. And she's going to kind of like shoot her eyes and dart her eyes around just to make sure nobody else seems to be walking up to. Okay. You don't see anybody else, like, walking up to the door. It seems to be contained inside of the bar itself. No, she just does that as, like, her nervous twitch. Like, that's just something she kind of does. She's very squirrely. She's kind of just, like, shooting her eyes around, trying to get just, like, a general view. Lenny, what are you doing? I'm going to, like, just watch her for a second to see what the hell is the matter with this kid. Well, are we going in or not, boss? You know what? Let's see what you got after you. So I'm going to, like, my character's going to kind of, like, look at him real nervous for a second. And then she's going to kind of, like, straighten her back and just start walking. And she's going to walk up to the door and kind of shove it open so that it's nice and wide for him to be able to see what's going on, too. I'm actually going to follow in behind her and then just go sit at the bar and order a drink. Okay. All right. Hold on. So as Lynn kicks the door open it flies wide open and you can immediately see just an absolute shit show people are screaming at each other there's people throwing bottles at each other there's yelling and two gentlemen up by the bar seem to be in a physical altercation swinging blows at each other you motherfucker you know exactly what you did now come on now i didn't fucking do nothing that's just the law of the land and it's crazy because all of this is juxtaposed against the sight of a very tall, very broad-shouldered man with a wide-brim leather hat in a duster carrying a fucking hammer and a book attached to his left hip next to a shorter, more live woman with a long duster and just the meanest rookie judge scowl you've ever seen. So, Letty, you said you're walking up to the bar? Yep. It's just through the car and it's just wading through it. Yep. Actually, no, not even, not, even wait, not even waiting through it, just like shoving anyone that's in my way. You just kind of like big dick energy, stroll yourself up to the bar, and what? You, you order a drink? I order a drink, and then I'm, I'm going to make sure I, I don't speak loud enough where she can hear me and just go, What the hell happened? To the bartender. So as like bottles are like whipping across the bar and shit's getting thrown and stuff, Nobody even bats you an eyelash. Like, nobody even notices your presence. And you walk up to this poor bartender who is, like, deftly dodging glass and, like, food and shit getting thrown around. And it's not bothering him. Like, this is this is Bastion. This happens every day. And he looks at you and he says, Oh, I see you got my call. Uh, it would appear that these two gentlemen are in some sort of physical altercation over what I can only assume is food, maybe? some sort of item they brought into the city. Ah, you'd have to ask them, what can I get you to drink? Give me a beer. Can I, while he's like getting his beer with all of my trainee excitement, just like full on like anime point up to the guys fighting and go, Freeze in the name of the law. You sure as hell can. Are you trying to like persuade them, intimidate them, surprise them? What's the goal here? I'm honestly just kind of trying to establish that I am a judge and that therefore they should stop fighting in front of me. Like maybe just like, hey guys, like chill out for a second because there is a judge here and I'm kind of trying my best to be like the little bunny from the zoo movie. All right, give me a charisma and expression, but give me minus one because this shit's a bit crazy in here right now. Oh, I got a five, a four, two threes and a one. I got no six, that is a botch. No, 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 that's not a botch. It's only a botch when you uh, when you roll more ones than you do successes. No, so you got a five and a four, so you got two successes. So go ahead, what do you boom out? Freeze in the name of the law, because it's my last name. I just realized that I named your character Judge Freeze. Um, okay, so as you scream that out, it's like, the record skips, like, brr, and like everyone just stops moving. Now, very understanding that there's a motherfucking judge in this motherfucking bar. I was just going to say, so now that I kind of have their attention, I want to move towards specifically the two guys who are like viciously fist fighting and kind of just like walk up and be like, can we talk about this? Okay, Lenny, what are you doing? 
I sit there and just watch as this plays out and just kind of... Rookies. And just take a sip. Okay. So while you're imbibing on the job, Judge Freese approaches the two men and asks them if they can talk about it. The first gentleman in front of you is very portly. He's kind of chubs. And he looks at you and he says, Oh, I see you got a black band on your shoulder there. So you're a rookie. Last I checked, I'm still a judge. I didn't mean anything by it, lady. Just, you're here to do business and adjudicate, right? Let's let's handle the problem, right? That is what I'm here for, if you gentlemen will tell me the problem. The other man pipes up real quick. He's much skinnier, much more squirrely. The problem is, is that this bloated dango's ass burnt my harvest. I brought it into Bastion to get inspected and sell it. This is my livelihood. This is what my family eats off of. And they burnt it. He got it burnt to the ground. He... He sabotaged my entire harvest with a spore pod. And now the portly man pumps up again. I absolutely didn't do shit to your harvest. That spore comes from your filthy fucking farm. We both know it. Everybody knows it. Alrighty, gentlemen, just calm down for the time being. We're going to have to look into this to see exactly what happened. But rest assured, once we find out, we will absolutely make sure that the perpetrator of this crime is brought to justice. The chubby one pipes up. Brought to justice? You mean brought before the fucking hygienist so the rest of our shit can get burnt. You judges are all the same. In bed with the spitalians. As he says that, can I just like look over at my boss and then like look back at this guy for a second? Can I call that a crime of heresy and punch him in the mouth? Is that okay? Is that in the codex? Uh, okay. So you're asking Judge Draven if it's in the codex. Draven, do you have any grit about you that you want to actually recite the codex? Or do you not really care that much? Well, hell, it's the first day. Might as well break her in quick. And I just kind of, like, I'm thinking this, and then I just kind of chuckle and just raise the bottle and just take another sip. I'm going to punch him in the mouth. Oh, god damn it. Uh, all right. <laughs> Go ahead and give me body plus brawl. And I'm going to give you a bonus dice because he absolutely did not see this fucking coming. Well, I have seven dice then, I believe. So three, four, five, six, seven starting. Yeah, so you caught him flat-footed, um, but he's also a fairly portly man, so your target's going to be at least two successes. That uppercut's going to feel real funny coming from down here, sir. Okay, so he has zero armor because he's just a fucking clanner. Like, he's a farmer. So how many successes did you get? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six successes. So you just take your fist, ball it up real quick, and just deliver like a mean, quick bunny jab straight to the side of his face. And it's enough to like drop him to the floor, but not enough to knock him out. At that point, I'm going to get down in his face and be like, sir, a trainee judge is still a judge, and we keep the peace around here. And if you're going to go around starting a bunch of mess... You just need to go home for the day. So what's your demeanor? Are you like Southern Dandelion or are you like a hardcore judge? She's trying to be like the best judge she can be, but she's so new to it. So like she doesn't want to take shit, but she also doesn't want to like incite people too much. Like she tries to ride that like fine middle line between not being a pushover and not being like a reckless asshole. Okay. So he spits one of his teeth out. (laughs) First day on the job and you're already kicking someone's ass. Real judgy of you. I declared what your crime was before I popped you. If he's going to talk trash about the judges, then I have every right to bring judgment to him. So as he stands back up, you reach down underneath the portly man's arm and you kind of help him up to his feet. And the skinny guy pipes up. See, if you would have just kept your fucking mouth shut, this would have all been gone smoothly. So at this point, I'm going to like make sure he's in a chair and he's upright and he's not going to fall over again. And now I'm going to look over at uh, Judge Draven and look at him and be like, so boss, you've heard their story. What do you want to do from here? I turn to the bartender and I go, which one swung first? He looks at you and like kind of giggles to himself. Well, technically the chubby one did. All right, then bring tons of fun and let's go. All right, bud. Looks like you're coming with us for now until we can get to the bottom of it. So I'm going to like kind of pull him up and get his arm over my shoulder because I feel like he's probably still a little dizzy. Well, hold on one second, judges. You're going to arrest him. Don't you want to tell him what his crimes are? For the crime of brawling in a bar point now we ain't got much else we can take him in all right boss i mean like the bartender said swung first i call that disturbing peace inciting violence what is your name sir my name is kenmore i don't understand why you're arresting me well mr kenmore you're coming with us right now for starting a fight in a bar and disturbing the peace he kind of looks around to see if there's any escape or anything he can do he breathes out heavily (sighs) all right i'll come with you and he puts his hands out in front of him. 
I don't really think he needs cuffs is the thing. I just clobbered him pretty hard in the face and he still don't look too good. So I'm gonna like kind of just like hoist him over my shoulder and like let him like lumber back with us towards our office, holding cell, whatever. Sure. Uh, is that okay with you, Judge Draven? Kid, look at where we are. We're in an enclosed area. What the hell do you think's gonna happen when we aren't in an enclosed area? I mean, he can't run too far if he can't see, can he? It's up to you, boss. At the end of the day, I'll do what you say. I do feel bad, though, about clobbering him a little. Cuff him. So I almost slapped the cuffs on him, then. Alright, so I turn to the other guy, and I'm actually gonna start talking with him. And I'm gonna go, Okay, now that the excitement's gone, why don't you tell me your side of the story? But the thing is, I want to try to intimidate him to make sure he tells me the truth. Okay. Roll me charisma plus dominance. I have ooh, three sixes, two fours, and a three. So, okay, you, you've got a lot of triggers on that. I'm going to go to him and I go, And I'm only going to ask you once, and I'm going to get what I want, because I have a feeling you know who I am. He's a defender of Bastion. I, I know exactly who you are. And do you know what happens to people when they lie to me? Ha- abs- ab- uh, yes, Judge. Yes, I do. They, they get judged. Yes. You know what? That's kind of a trick question, because no one lies to me. So this guy's pissing his pants right now. Like, he's he's legitimately moved and terrified. He kind of leans over to you, and he goes, Okay, listen, we, we brought our grain harvest in here together, and you know how it goes. We have to get everything checked by the Spitalian hygienist. Well, our farms are only two plots apart from each other. We actually border each other on one fence. Both of our plots were completely fine. We even inspected them together. Everything seemed fine. Everything seemed good. I was a day ahead of him. I get to the hygienist, and all of a sudden, some of my crops have spore on them. And the only way that that could have happened is if somebody put spore-infested harvest in my carriage. It had to have been him. I I saw him on my plot the night before. It had to have been him. Judge, I, I wouldn't make a false claim. The hygienist came and burnt my entire farm down. Every crop I had for two more seasons, ash. All because of that fucking bastard. My family can't eat. I have nothing to sell. And why didn't you confront him when you saw him? I didn't have proof until I saw him at the bar. Check his right hand when you see him. You know how Spore leaves marks on people. He's got Spore marks on his right hand. What's your name? My name? It's Charlie. Charlie Phelps. All right, Charlie. Now, I'm going to go talk to Mr. Refrigerator over there. Don't go far. Because if I find out you're lying to me, you're going to wish I brought you out of here in rope. Got it? Yes, sir. Yes, Judge. I mean, y- yes, J- Judge Draven. Yes, Judge. I won't move. Get out of my set and go clean yourself up. And then I walk out. Yes, yes, Judge. Thank you, Judge. Th- thank you, Judge. He yells at you as you walk out the door. Yeah, right before I actually do that, I'm actually going to take the money for the drink and just fl- flick it towards the bar right before I exit. The bartender hurriedly picks it up off the counter. Thanks a lot. Judge Draven, we'll be seeing you around here later tonight. Same time, usual drink as always. All right, so you guys arrive at the judge's hut. It's a small building. It consists of a main room, two holding cells, and a bathroom in the back. Think like extreme garbage built makeshift hut, but with rooms. And you toss Mr. Kenmore, Mr. Refrigerator, into holding cell A. And he doesn't give much fuss. He kind of looks like he's a little woozy, and he sits down on a cot. That gives you two some time to discuss whatever needs to happen. So, boss, we going up to check out that farm? Not just yet. I think I actually want to see how you deal with interrogation. All right, what do you want me to do? Do you not know what interrogation means? Go get the witness. The fucking blob in whatever cell it is. Okay, I'm going to go pull him out of the cell. He kind of groans and grunts as you, like, get him out. Uh, God, you really hit me hard, Judge. I'm sorry about that, but you wouldn't be quiet long enough for me to get any words out of you that were worth anything. I'll just set him down on a chair next to uh, the desk or whatever. He looks noticeably worn out. All right, so why don't you tell us what happened from your side of things now? Yeah, all right. So, I live next to the guy, Charlie. We kind of take care of the crops and make the pilgrimage over here to Bastion every harvest season together. This particular harvest season, we're traveling together, and he sabotages my fucking wagon. Now I got a busted axle, and I have to stop and fix it. And everybody knows whoever arrives in the first day gets the premium prices for the crops they have, okay? He set me back by a day. I got here, I get piss poor rates on my harvest, and then I find out that his entire harvest is infected. 
no surprise. I mean, he doesn't keep his crops as well as I do. And lo and behold, I guess he got in trouble with a Famulancer and a Hygienist. You know how Spitalians are. All doom and gloom by the book. Long story short, I guess one of the Hygienists rejected his entire harvest. And maybe they sent some guys over to purify his crops. I understand why he's mad, but I didn't do shit. How close together are y'all's crops if y'all are working on them together? I mean, I could toss a rock and hit the dumb son of a bitch if I wanted to. So how is it Spore could only get in one? And especially if y'all are walking back and forth between the fields. Why didn't both y'all's harvest get ripped? Judge, you know how Spore is. It'll hit this group and that group and jump a group entirely and then start on a whole nother group. It's no rhyme or reason. It just does what it wants. Well, I'll be real honest, Mr. What was your name again? My name? Kenmore. Bill Kenmore. Well, Mr. Kenmore, I'm gonna be real honest. Your story kind of smells a little bit more than them spore infections do. Okay, so are you suspecting him at this point? I do a little bit. It sounds like a little tit for tat, but it also sounds like a little more than that. Okay, so give me insight and uh, perception. Two successes. Okay, so you're able to kind of pick up that maybe he has a tell. Maybe he looks away from you, doesn't make eye contact when he starts talking about the fields. Maybe he twitches a little bit too much. He's fidgety. I mean, he's sweating pretty hard. Listen here, Mr. Kenmore. It sounds like it might have been some tip for tap, but there's something you ain't telling us. So I suggest you either do it or I'm going to give you another black eye to match the one you already got. Oh, come on, Judge. I told you everything I know. Yeah, but your story smells worse than them dogs outside. Jarrah, while she's actually doing that, can I actually try to see if I can see his right hand? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you can. Um, how do you want to do it? Do you want to, like, just say, show me your right hand, or do you want to, like, just peer? Try to, like, look at it as he's moving to, like, see if I can see any, like, residue that's, like, blatantly obvious. Yeah, give me intelligence plus perception. Two. Okay, so two successes. You can't tell if it's soil or if it's oil or if it's some sort of birthmark, but he does have a little bit of discoloration on his right wrist. Okay. So like he said, I already told you everything I know, Judge. I, it's just a happenstance. And he kind of like squeamishly, sluggishly drops back down on his chair as he stares at Judge Freeze. My character is going to kind of like look around a little nervous again, trying to make sure there's nobody like really like outside, maybe trying to listen to him or anything like that. And then she's going to kind of look over and, well, boss, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't believe the store very much, but for right now, with no proof of nothing, there's not much we can do but hold him in there. <laughs> oh, God, you rooks are so by the book. And, um, Jerry, do I have my hammer on me? You always have your hammer on you, Letty. <laughs> oh music to my ears i'm gonna look at uh tons of fun and i'm just gonna slowly reach down and grab the handle of my hammer oh god are you doing it as an intimidation measure yes i am absolutely give me body plus uh domination three successes and one six so four successes all together yep He's very intimidated. Uh, as you grasp your hammer and straighten your posture up as if to indicate that we both know what happens when judges are lied to. Before he does that, I'm gonna just slowly pick it up and put it over my shoulder and just go. I'm gonna ask you this once. Jessica's gonna kind of like start taking some small steps backwards away from the man because she doesn't really want to get splattered just yet. And I'm actually gonna just kind of drop the head of the hammer on the table. Like not really like slam it, just kind of like so it's a loud thud and like just so he can kind of like jump and scare the shit out of him. So as the metallic of the hammer head hits the metal table, it spooks him and he hops up a little bit and he throws his hands up in front of his face as if you're ready to punch him. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. As he does that, can I see it clearly what's on his right hand? Absolutely. So as he throws his right hand up, or both of his hands up in front of his face as if he's trying to prevent getting hit, you can see what looks like a tiny triangle with two spots on the left and right side. And it's just down by the radius of his thumb. Okay, okay, okay. Jesus. All right. Listen, he sabotaged my harvest. I always keep one piece of spored corn on me just in case. He sabotaged my wagon. I figured I'd get him back. I had no idea that the hygienist was gonna go the route he did. It was a harmless prank. You destroyed a man's entire livelihood because he fucked up your wagon. He kept me back for a day. He screwed up my entire profit margin on the harvest. I've got nine kids to feed. But didn't you just take out his harvest for the next three years? How was I supposed to know that the, that the hygienist was gonna do that? Okay, that's, that's a, the punishment seems a bit harsh, doesn't it? 
false, I think he's right. I think we ought to bring a hygienist in here and let him see his little spore ear of corn. Maybe he gets the same treatment he gave his friend. Throw him back in the jail. We're going to go have a chat with the hygienist. So at this point, I'm going to take him and grab him by the arm because I'm really upset with him. Like, I wanted him to not be the bad guy. And I'm just going to, like, kind of chuck him in this time and, like, shut and lock the door behind him. And I'm just going to stand in front of the cell, just wait for him to meet, like, look him in the eye. As Jessica throws Kenmore in the cell, I'm just going to try and wait for, like, just stand in front of the cell and just look at him. Just eye him down and wait till he tries to look me in the eye. And then I'm just gonna like take my hammer and take the head of it and just kind of slam it up on the cell and just go. Now you don't go nowhere, I'll be back. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere, trust me. This bullshit's gone too far. And he just kind of stays in the chair. Oh boy, I hope you're still lying to me. And then I just leave. Where are you going? Uh, we're gonna go uh, talk to the hygienist. So we'll just say you lock the door to the judge's uh, compound house and you start going out looking for the hygienist. At first, you walk down both ends of the main thoroughfare. And once you get to the western edge of it, you can see a couple of spitalians, uh, famulancers, which is a lower rank than the hygienist, standing around discussing something. Can I like try to hear them as we're like slowly walking up towards them? Uh, sure. I don't. I don't see any problem with that. Give me a instinct plus perception. One success. All right. So you're kind of able to pick up that they are waiting for higher up to come over and give them some more orders. They seem like they're joking, happy about something a little bit, but you can't really tell what until you get closer. Okay. Like, I mean, obviously I'm just kind of like just walking up, but like slowly so I can try to like piece together what they're saying. So I guess I'll approach a little bit more and try to hear them again. Do they have any particular reaction to judges as far as like reactions to each other? What do you mean? Like, would they know? notice a judge would they care about a judge or are they going to be more or less just going about their own business like are we going to have to interrupt them or are we going to be something that they are also concerned about being judged over in the law of the land judges are the law and spitalians are only ever superseding a judge in matters of sepsis okay so they are going to absolutely see us walking up as we get closer. Yes. While well, you could probably approach them and demand answers and they would give it to you in a militant fashion, the hygienist might be a bit more difficult. Okay? Yeah. All right. So is the plan to, what, talk to them or? Uh, no, I'm just still trying to like hear what they have to say. Okay. So same roll again, Lenny. Three successes, including a six. Okay. So at this point, you're probably about five meters away from them. And you can hear them saying, kind of going on and on with each other. And the basics of the conversation are that they just got back from a farming plot, plot K138, and they torched the entire thing. And they're kind of like super pumped about the fact that there's zero infection there. The hygienist has just reported that it's 100% purged, but they're very confused as to why it's still labeled as under quarantine. I'm actually going to look over at Jessica and what is she doing at the moment? Uh, she's just been kind of watching what you're doing and kind of following like a step or two behind, trying not to get in your way. Okay. Yes, I'm going to walk up to the little friend group and just make my presence known. All right. How are you going to make your presence known? Is there one that has their back to, uh, to me? Yes. It's the one talking the most. I'm just going to stand right the fuck behind him and just look down like I want to just fucking pick this guy up by his head and fucking smash it in. What's Judge Freese's general disposition right now? Um, Judge Freese isn't too happy about the idea that there might be some collusion going on with burning this man's farm from the sounds of it. Uh, but she's gonna let him do his intimidating thing. He's the boss. So she's kind of like, is there like a wall nearby she can kind of lean against where like she's still well within like movement of them? Sure. We'll say you're about, you know, six meters off. Can we make it like four meters? Like I'm like real close to him. I'm very aware of your movement speed. Yes, absolutely. You can Thank make it you. four meters. That's kind of what I, I want to be within like a step or two of them while he's doing in this, but I still want to be like out of his way. Okay, cool. So as Judge Draven steps up to the back end of this battalion, you notice the four men in what looks like black sealed leather. Each one of them has zero facial hair and zero hair on their head. They are pale. It looks like some sort of like borax or baby powder has been put on their skin and their helmets are by their feet. And the one whose back was to you just keeps talking. No, brothers, I don't understand why it would still be in quarantine. You see, it's not like the hygienist to just disinfect an entire area and then not deem it livable. It just 
begs to reason that he would leave it open for people to move back in. We don't want to isolate the people from their crops or from their homes. This just seems a bit out of character for him. Wouldn't you agree, brothers? As he says that, the other three are like gawking at the presence of the judge behind him. And he's like, brothers, what, what's the problem? I am actually just going to stand there and look down on him and just go, I don't know about you, but where I come from, Theron's kind of rude. So the one with his back to you, like you can hear the sound of the leather on his ass cheeks, the pants he's wearing, just like, like just pucker completely. And he's like slowly turns around and behind him is just this like stacked, dusty, gruff, gritty looking judge. Judge Draven, I, I didn't see you there. That's uh, it's quite all right. Please continue what were you saying about the uh, hygienist. At this point, they like kind of all look at each other and he says, Sir, you. We're not supposed to discuss circle business with the judiciary. You understand that? You know what I do? Maybe, uh. Maybe we should just go have a conversation with the hygienist myself. What I meant to say, sir, is that if you would like, I can notify the hygienist of your. <sighs> intent to speak with him. And we can have him meet you at your office, is what I meant, with absolute respect, sir. At this point, can, like, Jessica kind of wave at her boss, like, real fun, but she's still kind of shooting her eyes around, and she's like, Hey, boss, that sure sounds like obstruction of justice right now to me. I just kind of turn my head toward and go, You know what, Rook? I think that does sound like that. And I just look down right back at him, and I go, now, What do you boys think? The three behind him, like, nervously as shit laugh, like, at your smirk. They're like, ah, oh, ah. And the gentleman that you're directly in front of says, no, 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 sir, 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 judge, judge. You, you, mis you misunderstand. Not to say that you would misunderstand me, not to say that you're unintelligent at all. Just that I don't have the security clearance to even know what happened there. All I know is that we just returned with the hygienist and he's in the Grand Corp over at the medical tent. We were told to stay here. We have no other information to give you, but we will gladly bring him to you so you, the, the two of you at your station can communicate with each other as equals. We are not uh, informed enough to give you the information you seek. See, boys, I got a lot to do today, and I just don't really want to sit around and wait for the hygienist. I don't know, boss. I think I'm feeling a little under the weather. I might need to go to the hospital. As she looks around, like, real nervous and kind of, like, still a little sketched out, but kind of fine in their own space. As you say that, it's like you can hear all of their asses and simultaneously, like, pucker. <laughs> I just kind of ignore what she had to say and just go, Now I see four of you here. If I don't see one less of you in the next three seconds, I'm gonna make one of you disappear. The one in the back, he's a bit, like, thicker than the rest. He's like, I... Are you, are you saying one of us should just like disappear right now? Is that, is that what you mean? I just looked at the one that was doing the talking. I'm like, so clearly he's the brains of the outfit. Uh, what? <sighs> Rucker, what he means is go and get the goddamn hygienist. And Rucker kind of looks at him and like, it slowly comes to him. He's like, oh, well, right. Yes. And he just kind of like runs off like a husky fucker to try and find the hygienist real quick. Like he even like fumbles and like comes back and gets his helmet and then puts it on and then like runs over to the. So as you guys are standing there for like two minutes, maybe you see the husky dude like jogging back in front of a very slender man, like very skinny, but still very tall, just as bit as sterile looking as the other ones, but like with a bit more of a regal air to him. And he approaches and he says, Ah, Judge Draven, and I see you brought your trainee today. What can I do for you? What's the hygienist's name? You don't know yet. Would the hygienist technically be a higher, I mean, we're still law, but they wouldn't be higher rank. He's not a higher rank in judiciary than you. You still are the judge of the city, but he is of higher social standing than you. Okay. Good thing I'm grizzled and don't play by the rules because I don't give a shit. So I'm gonna just kind of jokingly be friendly, but not really mean it. Um, fuck this guy. Um, so I'm just gonna go to him like a- Well, you see, we had a little problem in town today, a little uh, altercation in a uh, local watering hole. And it seems you guys were sent out to one of the suspects' uh, farm. Ah, 
Yes, I do recall going out to a farm today. I think it was all four of these boys with me as well. Uh, seemed to be a simple uh, case of sepsis. We purged it forthright and as quickly as possible and to the highest standards of the city's Spitalian Code of Hygiene. Can I try to see if he's full of shit or, like, hiding something from me? No, absolutely. Uh, go ahead and give me instinct plus perception. Okay. What's uh, what's Judge Freeze doing? Currently, she is sitting here kind of listening to him. Is there a way for me to, like, see if anybody in the area, like, generally has, like, anything that they could use as a weapon or looks like they're particularly, like, maybe trying to grab for something that might be weapon-like? Oh, sure. You can see that all four of this battalions... They have their flamethrower thingies? No, they don't have flamethrowers. They, they have uh, splares. Spears with a little jiggly amoeba on the top of it. Lenny, you were trying to see if he's full of shit. Give me that roll. Uh, I got one. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you're just trying to see, like, put shit together and see? Yeah. Okay. Give me give me something to feed off of in conversation. Uh, so, uh, to standard. So, uh, if it's completely purged, I, uh, I can't help but notice it's, uh... Still under quarantine. He gives like a distasteful snicker and kind of like his eyes look off to the side as if he's staring at the four men. Hmm. You see, Judge uh, Draven, I know you, but you don't know me. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Forgrin Coolthane, Grand Relictor Hygienist of this battalion forces here on plot Z412. And I can assure you that if something is still under quarantine, it is under quarantine for a reason, and that reason is the complete eradication of the spore. Can I ask you something then, sir? He kind of like ears over at you, like, who the fuck are you? Kind of, you know? And so like at this point, like I kind of finally like lean off the wall and I come up to him and I'm like, can you tell me the name of the person who owned that farm you burnt this morning? He exhales and he goes, Raka, what was the name? of the place that was under quarantine this morning. Could you recall? And he snaps real quick to attention and he's like, Sir, I believe the man's name was Bill. I, I believe. Maybe it was Charlie? Charlie, yes. And now did y'all happen to check his neighbor's farm? Uh, Mr. Canmore? Rucker opens up again. Judge, there was no need to check the other farm because just the one had the sepsis on it. Just the one had the spore. Are you sure about that, though? Because we got Mr. Kenmore back here in a cell saying that he always keeps the spore-filled corner of corn just for a bad day. It'd be real sad to know y'all couldn't find something like that. So, as you zealously give all the details of what happened in your judge's holding cell, Forgrim sneers. My, my, Judge Draven, how far the judiciary branch has fallen. You let your trainees speak for you. You take the word of the common man over a registered hygienist. And now you accuse me of not doing my job to the fullest of the spittle's contention. I dare say that this seems like you're implicating I'm daft. Well, I don't know about you. You see, I like to lead by example. So if Rook over here sees something I don't see, she is more than willing to speak out. And if I'm not wrong, I'm pretty sure a judge asked you a question. Hey, Rook, what did you ask him again? Well, I asked if he checked the farm next door since that lovely gentleman sitting in our holding cell says he keeps a piece of spore corn for a salty day. And so seeing as you have a uh, hard on for rank, um, I'll ask you, did you check the next door neighbor's farm for any spore? Orgrim now forgoes the pleasantries. No, of course we didn't check the neighboring facility for spore. Spore spreads to a border. The plight was contained in the center of the field, which begs to resonate that there was no spore contamination. If none of the border and outlying parts had any spore, then there is no spore beyond the point. But, to be sure, we burnt every last crop to the ground, and then posted the quarantine markers, as is tradition and law under your books, Codex Marker 6A7-B. But you only did this on the one farm, but the other man is keeping spore somewhere in his house, which means it's got to be somewhere on his farm, and y'all are just going to let that go? As you say that, a look of absolute disgust pours over each one of this battalions. See, it's one thing 
to insist that a Spitalian did not do their job, specifically a hygienist. But it's another thing to lay claim that Spore still infects an area. And as you say that, they reach down to grab their helmets. Not in an aggressive manner, but like they have a job to do. So I'm actually gonna quiet down. I'm gonna put my hand down towards um, Judge Freeze and just kind of like, just tell her to back off. Judge Freeze is actually just gonna lean back up against her wall like she did the job she came to do. Now, gentlemen, how did you hear about this infection? The hygienist looks at you and pipes up. I heard about it in the way that is befitting a hygienist. When the gentleman in question brought his harvest in, it is our job to inspect every square inch of the harvest. No more than five minutes into the inspection did we find a piece of contaminated corn. The corn itself had the telltale signs of sepsis. You are familiar with them, the fungal growth on the outside of heave, and the tiny black triangles on the husk. This corn could, in the wrong hands, or once processed into food, infect an entire city. Are you aware of how devastating that would be for Bastion. Hundreds, if not a thousand, could be infected and immediately eliminated. So would not that other field not being infected be an important thing to check on? I'm looking at Judge Dredd, just kind of like talking to him and like saying it more so to him at this point. Judge, I can assure you and your deputy that now that this has been brought to our attention, we will be going out to investigate the second plot of land at first light. As you know, by your own judicial code, we are not permitted to travel after sundown. And he points to the bright orange ball in the sky that seems to be setting. Okay, just to make sure I got my story right. You found one single individual piece of corn that was contaminated, correct? One entire air of corn. And yet you felt the need to burn down the man's farm, the entire livelihood, because of one piece of corn. As you say that, Orgrim turns his head, snapping quickly to the right, and says, Fabulances, what is the job of this battalion? And they all pipe up in unison. Suffer not the spore. Suffer not the infection. Burn out the sepsis. Heal the land. Protect the people. Can I just ask you one more question, Mr. Coolfang? Yes, uh, what was it, deputy? It's not terribly important. What is important is... I'm just trying to understand. Now, do y'all actually check the farms too? Like, do y'all go and like weed through them? Like y'all weed through all these barrels of, of food coming in the city? Or are y'all just taking it off of the one ear of corn in this man's barrel that his farm must have gone bad too? Are you questioning the method to which we go about it? I'm simply trying to understand if you burnt this man's field down based on a carriage, or if you went out and investigated his field based on a carriage and then found more there and burnt it down on that cause. When you say that, the other four men pipe down and kind of start looking at the ground. Forgrim looks directly at you and makes eye contact. When I made the call, purge the sepsis from the farm, I first personally went to investigate the lands myself. After finding that they were inadequate and, in fact, infected, I ordered my Bravo squad here to grab the purgers and come down and burn out the sepsis from the land itself. Once that was finished, they disembarked and came back to Bastion. I myself personally laid down the quarantine tripwires on my own. While there was sepsis present, the entire land is now in burn remission. It is under quarantine until daybreak so that I personally may go and inspect it by myself, thus protecting my compatriots and underlings to ensure that the land is now habitable and no threat remains. Is that thorough? You know, boss, I just noticed something about these here powder folks. They only use one person to go and confirm something. But like, me and you, if we have to go to a case, we always go in twos because we got to make sure that that one person is doing their job right, don't we? So why is it that they're able to do this big fancy job where they keep us all safe, but they only need one of them and they don't need any fail safes to make sure that one guy does his job? And at this point, I'm still talking to Letty. Okay, as you say that, this battalion hygienist pipes up one more time. While it is imperative that the judiciary travel in groups of two, I can assure you that a battalion does his job as efficiently as two of you. 
Well, I can also assure you that if we find out that you wrongfully burnt down some gentleman's farm over something that had nothing to do with no sepsis, that the judge will come for you too, equal to anybody else. I'm actually going to take the, what is it, the one that was talking earlier. Rucker? Yeah, that one. I'm going to point to him and I go, You, now, before you knew we were there, now, refresh my memory for a sec, because um, I'm having a little trouble remembering this right, but I'm pretty sure you actually made a comment saying you didn't know why the farm was still under quarantine when the hygienist cleared it said the spore was completely eradicated did you not as you ask the question before he can pipe up the hygienist looks over to him lancer you do not have permission to speak and i turn to the hygienist and i go well see now i need to know that because if i don't that's technically obstructing justice at which point i will have to take Mr. Rucker with me, and I can't promise he'll come back in one piece. Well, boss, ain't we just had such a fun day today? Everybody wanting to obstruct us. Those are the best kind of days. Guys are so stupid. <laughs> you put the wrong two people in a game together. So as you kind of threaten him with going back to wherever, you can see like a glimmer of satisfaction across his face. Come now, Judge Draven. We both know in order for you to sequester one of my men, you're going to have to go through the hypocrite, bureaucracy and whatnot. But if you wish to launch a formal investigation, you may do so at sunrise. I shall inform the hypocrite of you visiting him at first light. I'm sure you will. With that, I go, oof, but the formalities. See, sir, you must be new in town, am I right? I go where I'm needed. Excellent. And I go, Rocker. He looks in your direction. Now, judging by the greeting you gave me, you know who I am. Do you not? Rucker looks at you and then looks at the hygienist. And the hygienist gives him a look like, you better not say a goddamn thing. Before he looks back at me, I go, Rucker, I asked you a fucking question. He pipes up, like, nervously. Yes, yes, Judge Draven. You are the judge of Bastion, defender of Bastion. Yes, we are all very aware of your reputation, sir. What do you think my opinion would be on these formalities? At this point, Forgrim's going to look back at you. Listen, I'm sure that you are just razor blades and leather back to the tens, but we both know two things. I'm actually gonna cut him off and I go- Now listen here, Mr. Fancy Pants, I don't give two shits about your fancy words, but where I come from, it's rude to uh, interrupt. So I was having a question over here. By all means, carry on. Apologies, Mr. Rucker. Continue what you were gonna say. And I'm just gonna kind of put my hand right on the head of my hammer. And not, not like going to grab it, just kind of resting my hand on it. Rucker looks at you and he says, fuck it. Judge, listen, we're willing to cooperate. And I'm sure the hygienist, who is very new here, wants to cooperate with you. There's just a way to go about this. I can assure you that we're going to cooperate 100%. We can't go out past the breach at night. No one but a judge can leave the zoning after nightfall. So then why don't you save me some goddamn time and help me find these goddamn pieces that I am not being made aware of? The hygienist whips out a piece of paper and like a clicker pen and draws something on the paper, holds it in half and hands it to you. What are you going to do with it? I'm actually going to take the piece of paper and I'm just going to hold it towards the rook, Judge Freeze, and just kind of like wave it and make her, you know, kind of signal to read it. <laughs> You're so pompous. Well, like, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up, grab the note from him, but I'm going to kind of like get in a little close and whisper in his ear real quick a little bit and be like, boss, I don't think we should open this here. I have a feeling whatever we have on this sheet of paper, if that hygienist sees it, he's going to start hiding even more. I don't trust him. Yeah, I don't either. I'm going to take my codex out and stick it like safely in some of the pages so that I know that I have it and tuck my codex back in for now. The hygienist is going to pipe up. I'm sure whatever you're looking for is well within the jurisdiction of a judge. I, however, must take my men to decontamination and have them turned in for the night as we have a busy day tomorrow of investigation thanks to you and your deputy. Well, now here's the thing. There's a crime committed that we have yet to solve. Several by this time. You're right. Several by now. Now, uh, here's the thing. You're gonna hold off on burning that place tomorrow. Because, don't worry. That fat sack of shit, I fucking hate him. When I'm done and get my answers, y'all can go in a fucking field and 
Light it on fire and fucking jerk off and I don't give a fuck what you do. But you only do it after I have found what I'm looking for. Sound good to you? Then it sounds like you and the deputy will be pulling, what is it they called it in the old books? An all-nighter? Because come daybreak, that entire farm will be purged by order of the hypocrite. That sure does sound like destroying evidence, too. He is just all about the law, ain't he? Well, this is just wonderful, ain't it, boss? We got us a nice new hygienist. This is gonna be just such a lovely year. So, fun fact, real quick out of character, because he is a few ranks higher than you, the next step he would go to is your boss, which would be the Black Judge, or the Arbiter. In this instance, in this city, it would be the Arbiter. The Arbiter is kind of like your chief, I guess, like in, in cop speak, so to speak. Well, boss, it don't look like we're getting much more out of these guys. Unfortunately, they're right. We probably will pull an all-nighter tonight. Yeah, it sounds like it. It's nice meeting y'all. I go, Rucker. Y- yes, Judge. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. You're probably going to be greeted by two strapping, fine specimens of human beings tomorrow morning. I suggest you cooperate a lot more. Understood? Yes, Judge, absolutely. Of, of course. Also, do me a favor. I don't wish that massive log out of your boss's ass. And, we're, and I just gotta... Come on, Rook. I'm just gonna turn on my heels and head straight after the boss. Okay, where are you guys heading? I feel like, honestly, probably at this point, we would have to go to the Arbiter. As you guys go to the Judiciary District... Now, I need you to understand what this looks like, okay? City Judge Outposts are like shacks. And Arbiters is like a small military bunker, okay? Either the Arbiter or the Assessor, depending on what it is. In this particular instance, it's an Arbiter because there's more than one city judge in the city. Dispatches advocates. Advocates dispatch city judges. City judges, what you guys are, answer to advocates directly and then Arbiter's second. So you're going directly to the Arbiter. You're skipping one rank of the food chain, so to speak, in order to get a more favorable warrant 